The intent of this video was to address the question, could the machine gun fire from a P-47 Thunderbolt penetrate the armor of a German Panzer VI Tiger tank? This evaluation is partially based on the YouTube clip showing a P-47 Thunderbolt pilot indicating that he would fire the plane's machine guns targeting the ground hoping for a bullet ricochet which would then penetrate the tank's underside. So what we would do, then we would shoot the bullets right underneath the tank and they'd bounce up from the ground or whatever row they were on or whatever up into inside the tank because they weren't armor plated underneath but they were on top and on the side. The video has 4.3 million views. In order to evaluate this claim we will need to estimate the tiger floor's thickness and type of armor, the strike speed of a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet, and the strike angle. The strike angle is referred to as the angle of obliquity and zero degree obliquity angle is perpendicular to the plate surface. All three factors have a significant effect on the penetrating power of a bullet. This chart from a declassified July 1944 Office of the Chief of Ordnance document titled Vulnerability Tests of German Tanks lists characteristics of the German Panzer VI Tiger tank including armor thickness. The thinnest gauge of the tank's armor is a top and floor panels at 26 millimeters as shown in these highlighted rows. 26 millimeters equates to 1.02 inches. This will be the only steel panels which may be vulnerable to the 50 caliber armor piercing slugs. This page from a June 1943 War Department Military Intelligence Service Bulletin also lists characteristics of the Tiger tank. The tank's top and floor armor thickness equates to 26 millimeter. In addition, the tank's armor was found to be homogeneous, not face hardened. Based on this data, we can list the Tiger's bottom armor as homogeneous and at a thickness of 1.02 inches. This chart outlines the P-47's guns harmonization distances from a January 1945 Army Air Forces document titled Manual for Fighter Gun Harmonization. The gun's converging sweet spot occurs at a distance of 1,200 feet as shaded in this view. The muzzle velocity of the bullets will equate to 2,700 feet per second. We will need to calculate the bullet strike speed taking into account the P-47's air speed and the bullet speed reduction due to drag for a range of 1,200 feet. Assume the P-47's ground attack speed of 350 miles per hour or 513 feet per second. This chart outlines the reduction in bullet speed from an Army Air Force training manual titled Fighter Gunnery. The upper x-axis is a bullet's velocity in feet per second. The y-axis is a range in yards. This dotted curve represents the 50 caliber armor piercing bullet. A bullet will lose 20% of its velocity at a distance of 1,200 feet. We can now calculate the bullet strike speed by adding the plane speed to the muzzle speed and reducing this value by 20% to take into account the drag expected at a range of 400 yards. The P-47's 50 caliber armor piercing bullet will strike the Tiger at a speed of 2,570 feet per second at a firing range of 400 yards. This chart from a 1945 Office of the Chief of Ordnance document titled Terminal Ballistics Data Volume 3 discusses ricochet ballistics. We will assume the angle of recovery equates to the angle of fall or the ground strike obliquity angle equals the armor strike obliquity angle. Data for 50 caliber strike angle after ricochet is difficult to find. However, this chart outlines the zones of ricochet versus penetrations for a 37 millimeter armor piercing projectile from a September 1945 National Defense Research Committee document titled Weapons Data Fire Impact Explosion. Assuming the road is constructed of thick concrete and a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet behaves like a 37 millimeter projectile, follow the center line axis to a strike velocity of 2,570 feet per second. Draw a horizontal line until you enter the shaded zone of ricochet and read off the obliquity angle. The bullet will ricochet at obliquity angles greater than 37 degrees. If the bullet strikes the ground at an obliquity angle less than 37 degrees, it will not ricochet. It will penetrate the ground. We now have the three parameters required to evaluate the P-47's bullet impact on the Tiger's armor. This graph outlines the penetrating power of a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet in homogeneous steel plates. The upper x-axis is the thickness of the steel plate from 0 to 1.5 inches. The y-axis is a bullet strike speed from 750 to 3000 feet per second. The curves in the body of the chart are the obliquity strike angles from 0 to 70 degrees, where 0 degrees 
uses a strike angle perpendicular to the plate. To use this chart, intersect the 2570 feet per second bullet strike speed with a 37 degree obliquity angle. Drop a vertical line to read off the armor plate gauge of 0.52 inches. The bullet would penetrate an armor 0.52 inches or thinner, but not thicker. This thickness is well below the Tiger's floor thickness of 1.02 inches. Even at a zero degree obliquity strike angle, a 50 caliber bullet would not penetrate the tank's floor armor. To penetrate an armor plate of 1.02 inches, the bullet would need to strike with a speed of 3,000 feet per second at a 20 degree obliquity angle. The evaluation also did not take into account the loss of bullet speed due to the ricochet. In conclusion, it does not appear that the 50 caliber armor piercing round would penetrate the Tiger tank's upper or floor armor plating. If you found this video worthy of your time, please consider engaging by commenting and or liking.